everybody else but his younger daughter. Amen. I forget her name. She fell in love with David. And so it was told your youngest daughter loves David. And so Saul said, uh, David said, uh, I want you to, Saul said to David, I want you to be my son-in-law. David said to Saul, who am I? I'm nothing. I'm of the tribe. Amen. And my family is the lowest in the tribe. In other words, he was telling the king, I don't have thousands of dollars of gold and silver for a dowry for your daughter. But Saul said, I got a trick up my sleeve. I'm going to tell him to go and kill. First he said to his first daughter, kill a hundred for this. He killed him. And then he said, and he became David come now enemies from the enemy number one to the Philistine. Then for the younger baby, daughter, he said, kill 200 Philistines. Saul said, yeah, the Philistines will kill him. They will get him. They'll be out there trying to kill these 200, and they will get him. So God watched over him. He came back with 200 foreskins of the Philistine army. Gave it to him. He was married to her. That girl loved him so much, she helped protect him. She let him down when they tried to set him up one night. On the night he was married, when he went into his bride, to have, you know, the new nuptials and everything. They tried to set him up, kill him. They told some people, when he's here in the morning, kill him dead. His daughter heard about it. She overheard the plot, and she come back and told him, dear darling, get in this basket. I'll let, I'll let you down over the wall. You gotta get out of here. She took a statue, put it in the bed, took some goat sheep hair, put it around the head of the statue, and covered it up with just the hair to stick it out. And, and then when Saul sat, Saul soldiers coming early in the morning, she said, David is sick. They went back and told Saul, and Saul said, go get him. Kill him right in his sick bed. Right in his bed, kill him right in front of him. They went and got the sick bed, drew back the sword, co-op, king! It was a statue. Oh, goodness. <laughs> then Saul called his daughter, get in here, girl. Why are you doing this to me? She said, David, she, she lied. She said, David said, you got to let me go, sweetie, because I don't want to kill you. So Saul said, oh, he threatened her. Okay, you know, she got over it. But David was protected by God every time his enemies tried to get him. Amen. You want to know why? He was to be the next king. That's right. And God was training him. Can y'all now understand why Amen. God has told me to teach you how to share God's word? Teach you how to teach. Amen. Teach you how to do this. We're going to go over preparation of, 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 uh, of your lesson plan. Because one of these days, God may even anoint you to preach. Mm -hmm. You've got to know how to come up with an a outline for preaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're still on, bro. We, we got to get you before you go. Okay. Amen. And so, this is what God was doing. But Samuel, I'm sorry, uh, the son, the first son of, of Saul, Jonathan, he loved David like his own brother. Matter of fact, he loved him more dearly than a brother. Watch this. Jonathan was the declared and known second, third, second king of Israel. He was the first prince. But when he fell in love with David, watch God work, Jonathan took off his sword. Yes, he did. Gave it to him. Took off his clothing. Mm -hmm. His princely clothing. Made David come out of that shepherd's stuff mm -hmm. and put on the clothing of a royal person. Mm -hmm. And gave him his sword. Yes, he did. And Jonathan became the nobody. Yes. He preferred David because that was God's will. Oh, yeah. And I don't know why King Saul didn't see this and didn't understand what God was telling him. But Saul got a program mm -hmm. of chasing and hounding and pursuing <laughs> David to try to kill him and protect his interests as a king and the interests of his son that was to follow. But we know the story. Amen. And I'm getting ready to close. We know the story. Amen. God led the Philistines wipe out all of Saul's sons and him and on the same battlefield. Amen. There was only one descendant of the family of Saul and Jonathan left, and it was Jonathan's little 
crippled boy, Mephibosheth. When, they, when, when the Philistines killed all of the, 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 the family, and it was known by the nursemaid that was over this little boy that David was going to become king, she took that little boy and hid him deep into Israel, among the very population of Israel. But one day when David was king, he was sitting around his throne, he asked, is there any of Jonathan and any of Saul's family, any, anywhere, in Israel, no. One of the people of his cabinet said, yes. One of the little crippled boys, one of the little crippled sons of Jonathan. Jonathan made David declare to him that he would not kill his family. That's what he did. He and David made a blood oath, That's a right. covenant. Mm -hmm. Jonathan loved him so much, he says, when your enemies are vanquished, and Jonathan even prophesied, and when you are king, see, God knows what to do. Remember my family. Let anyone that's still living live. David called for, and that little boy, Mephibosheth, come up out of nowhere. He's sitting down at David's table. I know that little boy was scared, Brother Harry. I know that little boy was scared, because you know what the custom was? You killed all of the previous king's family. All of them. So you would not have any rivals and nobody plotting behind your back to overthrow your kingship. So you erased families. Or if I'd have been king family, I would have been traveling. When is the change of kingship? Next month. Okay, family, why pack it up? Where are we going? France. I'd be out of there. Gone! Amen. And I do it in the middle of the night. Where nobody would know anymore. Just like Jesus' mother and father did Jesus when Herod was chasing them. They scooped up little baby Jesus in the middle of the night. They went into Egypt. Amen. Nobody knew where it was but God and his holy angel. Who called him out? God did. God called his son out of Egypt. Back into Palestine. David was chased and chased and chased and finally, and I'm closing, finally David had to leave the courts of Saul. He had to leave. So him and Jonathan had that. 18th chapter, they had that famous talk about if my father's after you, I'm going to shoot the arrow. And if my arrow is on this side of the rock, then you can come back into the kingdom. If it's on the other side of the rock, you got to leave. Amen. So the arrow, John had to shoot the arrow on the other side of the rock. He sent his, his boy, his fetch boy, his arrow boy. He said, go get the arrow. And when he got to the stone, he said, it's on the other side. Go way on the other side, it's over there. David knew he had to leave. So David went first and got with Samuel down at Rome. We know the story. We know, it. We know what happened there. Saul sent people. Saul came himself. And God made them all preach and prophesy. And then he embarrassed Saul by causing him to come out of his clothes and lay on the ground naked all night long, preaching, amen, and David made his getaway. Here's what God did for David to keep him and secure him during his outback travels. Hiding from Saul, he found a special place called the Cave of Adon. And in that cave, David's family came to him. Jesse and all of his brothers and all of the people of Israel that was discontent, angry with Saul and the government, discontent, discouraged, soldiers, professional soldiers, mighty men of valor from Saul's army, 400 mighty men of valor. <laughs> I'm telling you, saints of God, when God fix you up to be victorious, yes. he fixes you up. Amen. He don't give you any wimpy, scared soldiers. Mm -hmm. 400 valiant men yes. of Israel mm -hmm. deserted the army of Saul and went to David. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Clap your hand and give God a prayer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When God builds your defense, he builds your defense. Yeah. And Saul, David did not run from that cave much except to go out and to do stuff. And the cave was so hidden Till Saul had his army all around this cave, all around the mountain, and the cave was up on the mountain. 
And when Saul camped that night, David came out, looked over the camp, and then he told one of, Joe, one of the Joab, he said, come with me. They went down into the camp of Saul in the middle of the night, in the early morning, crept into the camp of Saul, the royal camp, went to Saul's sleeping place, took Saul's sword, which was laying by his head, cut off a piece of his kingly garment, and stuck it on that sword, and took it with him and went back up the mountain. And then the next morning, bright and early, and I'm closing, I'm going to say this, God brings you out, he brings you over, mm -hmm. and he carries you through. Amen. Next morning, bright and early, David was up on the mountain. He called out to the army, general of the army, Joab, or whatever his name was. He said, come out. I want to talk to you. He said, see this? He held a piece of it. the king garment. Mm -hmm. I cut this off. Yeah. Check it. I cut it off of Saul's royal robe. You didn't do your job. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to protect it. Then he asked Saul, what have I done to you? Why have you chased me? You know I love you. You know I've worked for you. Why are you doing this? The Bible says Saul broke down and cried and repented. This is not the first time he did that. But he always turned evil. And shortly after that, God let the Philistines kill him, his entire family. And David was declared king, amen, at Hebron of all of Israel. Clap your hand and give God praise. Amen. David was declared king. And three young men who helped him take uh, Salem or old, old uh, Jerusalem, Salem, from the, the Hittite folks who had it, uh, Benaiah, Joab, and another one. Three of those valiant men. David was at this city, surrounded it. Uh, they fought all day. It was hot and thirsty in the afternoon. David, David was reminiscing and dreaming. He said, oh, did I, oh, did I get a glass, a glass of that cold water from that well somewhere inside of the city of Jerusalem? And Joab and Benaiah and Abishai heard it. His three most famous valiant men. They said, come on, fellas. Let's get him that water. They went down, they fought their way through the Philistines, they fought their way on the inside, got that water, fought their way back out, and gave the glass of water to the king. Did the king in pride drink it and say, oh, this is some good water. You know what the king did? The king poured it out to the glory of God. He said, I can't drink this water because men hazard their lives and shed their blood. Some of those guys got cut, they didn't die. And all the people around him, they got cut. Men have shed their blood. He pulled that water out and gave God glory. Amen. He didn't drink that water. He said, men have hazarded their lives on my idle thinking. So that shows you God had picked the right man, had he not? Amen. Amen. A man that was compassionate, a man that had feelings for people, yes. a man that loved God, right. a man that knew how to repent when he committed adultery. Yes. God chose the right man. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say this to us. God didn't bring us out and bring us over and keep us this far for nothing. Oh, no. He knows who he has called. All right. He knows who he has Amen. chosen. Amen. He has chosen you, 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 and you, all of us. He yes. knows it. He knows us. And, but he's going to test you yes. just like he did David. Yes. He tested David. He tried David. He trained David how to be a king, how to be a valiant warrior, yes. how to be a man that loved God yes. and loved God's word, yes. and how to be a man that obeyed God's commandment. Yes. Because when he was speaking to, to uh, Joab, he said, you know what God said to me? Yes. I could have killed him last night, but God said to me, touch not thy mind anointed, and do my prophet no harm. David yes. could have said, I'm the king. I should have killed him last night. But David said, God said he's the king, yes. and he still is the king. And I'm not going to touch him. I'm going to let God touch him. And a few days, weeks, a month, the Philistine army took care of Saul's family, and David was declared king at Hebron. I want to say this to you all the by the way. Say with me, I am, I am a child of the king. Child of the king. We, are we are king's children. Cap your hand and give God a chance. We are kings, too. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, brother. Stand to your feet. Glory to you. We are kings.